It's the Orioles on Masset, and we welcome you to Camden Yards in Baltimore. And baseball history will be made here today as the Chicago White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles will play the only game that they will play in what was supposed to be a three-game set. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and welcome. Circumstances all of us wish were different because of what has gone on here in Baltimore, the civil disruption outside, and for the safety of individuals. This ballpark today is going to be empty. For the first time in Major League history, a ball game, a regular season game, will be played with no fans in attendance. We wish that were otherwise today, and as Adam Jones said, all of us thinking about this great city and its chance to recover. Jim Palmer, you have played uh, in the city and been with this organization now for 50 years. This is one of those moments where you may make history, but you really wish you didn't have to do it. Well, you're right. I mean, you know, we had the, uh, you know, 1968 after the death of Martin Luther King. Uh, the city went through, uh, what, six, seven, eight days of, of uh, race riots and whatever. Uh, I think everybody understands that why you're doing what you're doing, which is playing uh, the game. Uh, you know, you're trying to have some continuity with your ball club, but you also understand that, you know, there's a great need for whether it's your, your security or, uh, you know, the National Guard or ever, whatever being somewhere else today. So, you know, uh, you just hope that this will make a difference. Uh, obviously, it's, I think it's very hard to understand that. Uh, you know, I'm sure you're getting the same thing, text messages from people all over, literally over, all over the, the world saying, hey, what's going on and whatever. So it's a tough time, but hopefully this will make a difference. And, uh, you know, the Orioles are one of those ball clubs. If you talk to Buck Showalter, hey, we, you know, we have long trips. We get in at 4 o'clock in the morning. This is one of those things that you're just going to, and they pride themselves in being a grind-out ball club. This is one of those days you really have to grind. There will be people outside who will be looking in for this ball game. Why even play the game? Well, the answer to that, I think, is both Buck Walter and Adam Jones both said, we do want to try and bring some kind of normalcy back to the city. And even though the fans can't come in to see the ball game, at least it's an opportunity, maybe, for them to feel as though we're going back to a city closer to the Baltimore that we know and love. So we are ready to play some baseball today. The Chicago White Sox and the Baltimore Orioles. We'll be right back. First pitch. Lines, book your low fare now at southwest.com and by your local Mercedes dealership. Absolutely gorgeous day here in Baltimore, and as far as the city is concerned, it has quiet, quieted down a great deal from what it was a couple of nights ago, trying to get back to a normal day's activities. There is, of course, a curfew in effect with everybody off the street at 10 o'clock, unless it's a medical or work 
need reason to be out. And there you get a look live at downtown here in Baltimore today. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Chicago White Sox. It will be Eaton Cabrera and Abreu, LaRoche Garcia, Gillespie, Ramirez, Soto, and uh, Micah Johnson playing at second. Last five for Abreu, just red hot. And Ubaldo Jimenez, uh, he'll uh, pitch for the Orioles. You can see a lot of fastballs. Uh, last game, uh, not as good as his first couple uh, because he gave up a couple of home runs, got some balls up, got behind some hitters. As you can see, a nice mix, but mostly fastballs. That's where it starts. Try to be around the knees, throw strike one. And again, this is a White Sox team that started out 0-4, but over the what the last 13 games, they're a little bit over five and a half runs a game. So they've been swinging the bat well. Yeah, after that 0-4 uh, start, they've gone 8-5. and five, So uh, putting them right back in the mix, four games out in the division. And the pitch is in there for a strike. And uh, the history-making ball game is now officially in the books as having begun with uh, the Orioles and the White Sox playing here for just one. They'll play the other two that were missed in a doubleheader in late May. <laughs> pitch will be in the inside corner for a strike. And Jimenez hoping that he can keep himself on track as the Orioles look for him to rebound from the season he had last year. He is two and three lifetime against the White Sox ERA of over five against the White Sox here in this ballpark. Jimenez now calls home five wins six losses here at Camden Yards with a four point eight two earned run average. Eaton three for four lifetime off him and a swing and a miss and a great changeup will take him out of there one down. Yeah, this is how you do it. You, you talked about the formula we saw against Toronto. He pitched a one hitter, get ahead. Now the last game against Toronto did not have the ability to get ahead or really the good split finger. Here it is. So again, you know, coming out of Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, this is kind of you kind of uh, go back and put yourself uh, when you used to pitch as a kid because we're all during spring training. You pitch back, you know, you pitch Triple A games, you pitch backfield games, getting your work in. The difference, of course, this one matters. Melky Cabrera will stand in. Melky's had a three for 14 lifetime off the Orioles right hander and a swing and a foul. There's the uh, the Oriole defense, the Aza Jones and Young Machado Cur Cabrera Navarro uh, about fourth game back coming from triple A and then you have Chris Davis Caleb Joseph doing the catching. Oh to the count with one down 31 year old. Right hander with the infield uh, pretty much straight up here against Cabrera. Melky, of course, a lot of games played against the uh, Orioles in his career, getting the start in left field in this ball game. He is a 284 career hitter against the Orioles and has had six home runs against those pitching over the years with a couple of those dingers coming here in this ballpark at Camden Yards. Yeah, he's a 286 lifetime hitter. Last year, 171 hits playing for Toronto. 2 2 delivery on the way to him, and that's a chopper. Jimenez will make the clean feel and get the out. Two down here in the first inning. Let's take a look at our Jeep inside the numbers and today's starters. You can see uh, the, uh, you know, the, those are the East numbers for Jeff the Samarza. The Orioles got him one time in, uh, in Oakland, hit a couple home runs, four runs in seven innings. And then there are the, because Jimenez pitched with Cleveland coming over from the Rockies. You can see, again, not great numbers. Against the White Sox, but different wind up, maybe different focus. So you hope that uh, Ubaldo will do the things that he did in spring training, which is after his first couple of starts, throw a lot of strikes, get ahead of hitters, something he couldn't do last season. Jose Abreu, boy, what a great start he's had to a tremendous season last year. Abreu's got an eight game hit streak coming into this ball game, one for three, a home run lifetime off Jimenez. See the number right there. He is. Uh, just one of the game's bright young stars after the uh, awards last season looking to continue it which is often hard in the sophomore season boy right now he's on it well he did everything he could possibly do as a player I mean he had 353 off of lefties with 10 home runs right handers over 300 305 uh, you know they adjusted uh, what he hit uh, 29 home runs in his first 351 at bats and then in the next 271 he only hit seven home runs but he still hit over 300. He's joined a select group of only three Rudy York Chuck Klein and Ryan Braun the only players in Major League history to hit at least 300 with 40 plus home runs and 120 more RBIs 
through their first 162 games. But Jimenez will take care of them in a hurry right there. One, two, three inning here at Camden Yards. Orioles lineup coming up. the ballpark and they have been cheering uh, during that first half inning the loyal the true they also stand by all right let's take a look at the O's starting lineup brought to you by Southwest look your low fare now at southwest.com it'll be Diaz of Paredes and Young Jones Davis and Machado Cabrera Joseph and Navarro versus the White Sox solid numbers big home run numbers for Jones and coming in will be Deaza, and he will take the pitch, which will miss for a ball. Yeah, there's uh, Jeff Samarza. The, again, the Orioles saw him. A lot of fastballs. Nice slider. Loves it. Quarter of the percent of the time. And then got a straight change up, but uh, last year was only a splitter, so he's added another pitch and throws a lot of strikes. Has good stuff. He can, his average fastball, at least this season, this will be his fourth start, 94 miles per hour. So He's a big guy out of Notre Dame, was also a football player, very adept at that. Most people thought maybe he'd be drafted in the first round, but he chose baseball. Fifth start, as Jim said, on the season for Samaja. Deaza will foul that one away. Samaja is coming off a start against Cleveland where he shut them out on six hits through six innings. He won that ball game for his first win, opening loss to Kansas City, then non-decision against Minnesota and Detroit. Those are his starts this year. Samaja, 30 years old, in at third base, Gillespie, pitched to Deaza, will be taken inside. These two have faced one another uh, more than anybody else in the lineup for the Orioles, as Deaza's gone one for 12 against Samaja in his career. Still in, even with the bag at third, Gillespie, 3 1 delivery, will be fouled back into the seats. Somebody said today, now, could a player jump over the wall? Go into the stands and try and make a catch since there's nobody there in a football. Well, there's ball. not going to be any fan interference, obviously. But I you mean, can't do that. No. You can't leave the field to play anymore. It's the same rule as applies to the dugout. You can no longer go in the dugout to make a catch. You can lean in, but you can't yeah. go in. That's was is that a, now that Derek Jeter is retired? And yes, you still in. can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Another one <laughs> fouled away. Well, the last time the Orioles played was Sunday afternoon, and they threw 20 hits and 18 runs against the Red Sox. Seems like it's probably about, what, two weeks ago? Yeah. Yep, Buck Showalter and the White Sox, both these teams came out to uh, practice yesterday here at Camden Yards. Three ball, two strike count on Deaza, and the pitch will be fouled back again. Will all these souvenirs still be in the stands 10 days from now when the Orioles return back home for their next home game? Could be a lot of baseballs around the ballpark. Well, you have a couple of scouts behind home plate, and that's it. Yep, that's it. And you, can, yeah, and you can see Samarza, he does not want to walk Diazza. And again, uh, people have stolen bases against Samarza and uh, make it an opportunity to do so right here. Yeah, take a look at the defense, and there is no such thing for defense behind a walk. Cabrera, Eaton, and Garcia. Uh, Gillespie, Ramirez, uh, Johnson, uh, Micah Johnson, a rookie, and then a Brave for a big guy, a home run hitter, pretty adept at fielding at first, and then 
uh, Giovanni uh, Soto will be at least initially doing the catching. Well, Flowers, another catcher that was in the original lineup on Monday night. <laughs> Jimmy Paredes. <laughs> I'm sorry. Foul back. We broadcast. The broadcast booth, we're, close, we're, we're right next to each other, so the WGN broadcast for the White Sox is to my left. And uh, Ken, Ken Harrelson, the Hawk, over there with Steve Stone. Stone's already complaining. He can hear me over there. So I'm going to talk louder than ever. <laughs> <laughs> For 80s with the whole one count. <laughs> and the pitch will be taken away. Brady is, of course, red hot. He comes in with a three-game hit streak. He is 8 for 15 on this homestand for the Orioles. He's had two home runs, four runs scored, and seven RBIs during this uh, limited homestand. Yeah, and mean, he's hit the, I mean, hits to all parts of the ballpark. And uh, home runs to left field, home runs to right field, breaking ball home run the other day uh, for Justin Masterson, who pitched a pretty good game for the Red Sox. And, you know, a two-run home run in Toronto, uh, you know, I mean, you, you throw it, and it doesn't mean he's a switch hitter, so it doesn't really matter if he's hitting left-handed or right-handed. I mean, like you said, just scalding hot. Yep. Two for four, stealing bases, Deaza. That's a reason for Samaja's attention over there. Samaja does not hold base runners well. There are already four out of five stealing bases against him this year. Runner not going here. That'll go to first. Tag play. Nope. Got to go back to first. Yeah, yeah, and not safe. in time. So he will reach, and they're both safe. There's a break for the Orioles. Coming across was uh, Beckham. And on the play at second base, he did a little bit of the Ole play and did not get on it. Yeah, Ramirez, uh, you know, he's a tall guy. And, you know, Braves thinking, all right, I mean, not even close right there. He's thinking, am I going to tag the bag? But then it would have been a difficult throw because of the angle right there. He's thinking of throwing. I mean, then he does throw. I thought he was just going to go over and tag the bag. So the angle of the runner really changes everything. I mean, you know, maybe if you're left-handed, you get the ball, quickly get it, but a very difficult play for a right-handed uh, first baseman. Now, the error is going to be charged on the throw by Abreu. So that'll put Deaza down at second base. Paredes on at first base, and the Orioles get a chance here with Delman Young hitting third in the lineup. He's got a three-game hit streak coming into the ball game. Delman, too, has been tagging it. That'll go to center, charging. Eaton can't get it. Try for the force at second base. That will not be in time. And the Orioles have loaded him up. So Young continues his hot streak. And the Orioles, with nobody out first inning, have him covered. Yeah, Adam Eden playing very deep. Uh, the Red Sox played Delman Young. You can see right there, he's over in left center by only a step. So right there, can't get to it. Tries to get the force at second. The base running by Jimmy Paredes, so he'll load him up. So the Orioles get a great chance here to the chant of let's go O's from the fans outside the ballpark. And Adam Jones will stand in. Jones uh, coming in with a four game hit streak overall. He's got an eight game hit streak going against these White Sox. 14 for his last 34 against the White Sox, including three home runs and an eight game hit streak against them. And he's got a chance here with the bases loaded and only. Is a zero up there in the outs department. Yeah, so Samarza, Jeff goes to another, uh, you know, dials it up a little bit. 93, hardest, most velocity he's at. Ball put up in the air to right field. This should get a run in. Garcia's there, will make the catch. Throw will come into the cutoff man and no play anywhere. Sack fly. So Adam Jones gets it done as he delivers the sack fly for the Orioles. Boy, they've been using that this year. That's his 19th. RBI, he leads the Orioles and is among the top five in the American League and runs batted in. Yeah, so he chases early on in the count, and what we've seen Adam do is uh, as the he's willing to see more pitches. Uh, again, Scott Coolbaugh on for the uh, as the hitting instructor. Every day they take batting practice. Man on third, get a ball in the air, and that's exactly what Adam does. Now runners on at first and third. Brady's able to tag up, move over to third base. Young still on at first. Chris Davis will go after the first pitch and he will foul it back. Adam now with 19 RBIs tied for fourth in the American League. Nelson Cruz the leader with 21 and Jones with 19. So Adam getting it done. The Orioles get on the board. Orioles have not lost to these White Sox in the last six games played against them. Last year they were five and one against the White Sox. McShaw Walters team looking for their 10th win. A victory here today would get them back to 500. 
They are three games out in the American League East coming into today's play. Yeah, Chris Davis, uh, three hits on uh, Sunday. One of them a home run over the center field fence. 1-1 one, one delivery, and he got a hold of that one. It is deep. Will it stay fair? And goodbye, home run. Chris Davis delivers a three RBI homer as he puts it out beyond the flag pavilion. And he is red hot at the plate for the Orioles. That's his fifth home run, and he's got 16 batted in. Oh, Gary, I, it's, I was talking to Don Cooper, the uh, pitching coach. He was down behind the batting cage early today, and he said, well, Samarz has come up with another changeup, and that was it. He's got a splitter, a splitter when thrown well. We see Miguel Gonzalez for the Orioles do it all the time. It has a lot of movement. That was a changeup that stayed belt high. And the Orioles lead by four. Mm. So the Orioles are getting to Samaja. There's a base hit going to the gap by Manny Machado. He'll make the turn, eaten up with it. Here's the throw coming into second off the mark, and it's a stand up double for Machado. And Samaja not fooling anyone. Now take a look. Uh, again, Chris Davis is just trying to get a ball in the air. So here it looks like a change up. It stays in the middle of the plate, it speeds up the bat. Strange sound, isn't it? Well, it really is. And, uh, it reminds me of the, the old ballpark here at Memorial Stadium had metal seats. And when you hit a home run and there weren't any people, you could hear it land. Not a good sound if you were pitching that day. No. Here's Everett Cabrera, and he will swing through it for a strike. So the Orioles, Manny Machado on its second base, four runs in, four runs, three hits here in the first inning. The leadoff walk to Deaza has crossed. And now, opportunity here for the Orioles to add another. Well, two shots to, to, to get the fifth run in. They had two six-run innings on Sunday. They uh, they won in a matter of one day. They went to uh, at least at that point Kansas City because they played more games. Uh, but they went from probably what about fifth in runs all the way to the top. They now. With 104 runs, make it now 108 runs, lead the American League. That's a fair ball that's going to go into the corner. Chase down deep at the 333 mark. That will score Manny Machado. It is a double for Cabrera and an RBI, and the Orioles pouring it on here early in the ball game. First inning and a five nothing lead. Well, doubles and singles, they're taking exactly where they were on Sunday with uh, again 20 runs. For 18 runs, 20 hits. Looks like a splitter that stays up. And then Cabrera, he's just a contact hitter. Cabrera can't get it. The other Cabrera out in left field and it inside the line. So now the Orioles with five runs here in the top of the or the bottom of the first inning. Don Cooper, pitching coach, with a very quick visit to the mound as Cabrera ends up at second base. There is Cooper with Samaja. Getting tagged here already for five runs on four hits. He has no record against the Orioles. Only the second game he's ever pitched against the O's. And the pitch will be taken on the inside corner for a strike. Here is Caleb Joseph with a great 311 mark, a home run, and four RBIs on the year. Orioles coming in, hitting 301 with runners in scoring position, third best in the league. He will pop that one up down the line, and that'll be out of play. I promised Caleb Joseph we were going to get this on the air the next game he caught because there are certain things that divide a season that make you strong. For Caleb Joseph, it was the birth of Walker Everett Joseph, first baby for the family, before he hit 207, since then 311, and his comment was, baby's got to eat, and baby's going to eat some more. Another base hit into right field. Coming around to score, Cabrera, there'll be no play at the plate. And Caleb Joseph picks up a single and an RBI. That'll be RBI number five on the season for the Oriole catcher. And Jeff Sabars is wondering what is going on. They've hit him hard. They've hit him soft right there. But what's your approach? I mean, inside out. I mean, last year, Caleb would probably have pulled that ball, might have popped it up. Nice effort by uh, Johnson at second, but he can't quite reach it. And the Orioles get their sixth run here in the first inning. So well, the Orioles have just found no reason to stop doing what they were doing on Sunday. Well, how about playing nine innings and you have three six run innings? Yeah, uh, they didn't even play nine. And, you know, so I'm talking about eight on Sunday where they had the 18 uh, runs and 20 hits. And uh, what did uh, 
Great line uh, on Monday about momentum. Delman Young says it's when it's when you go to sleep. That's when momentum ends. Uh, you know, in other words, that's why maybe some ball players don't sleep a lot. Um, and then Buck Showalter said, uh, "Momentum, Jim Leland line, 1987, is only as good as the next day's starter." Exactly. Or in this case, the next day's starting lineup. <laughs> yeah. Runner on at first base, still only one away. That ball will be put on down the line. You see it coming over. That's a long run, and it will be caught. Outstanding catch made out there in right field and a long way to go. And Garcia got there, hauled it in, and the runner will go back to first base. Yeah, he's a big guy, and, uh, you know, comes out of the Tiger organization. Nice, nice play. I mean, just think, if you're a defensive play for the White Sox, and, I mean, here you are, that ball just would have been called foul. But you've been standing out there, and now all of a sudden, uh, you get a chance to make a play and that was outstanding. So the Orioles as they did on Sunday are going to bat around here as we go back to the top of the order. Alejandro de Aza started this with a walk two down now with a runner on at first base on Sunday the Orioles batted around twice in that game against Boston. They sent ten to the plate in the third inning and they did that again in the seventh inning and here is the tenth batter of the at bat here in the first inning of this game. Off speed delivery, and that'll be in there for a strike and even it up at 101. And Samaj has had obviously a 30 pitch inning here, long inning with all these Oriole bats ringing out. But a lot of strikes. It's not like he's wild. I mean, he's made some bad pitches. He's been a little unlucky. White Sox will have to get their bullpen uh, active here immediately. Carroll up in the bullpen for them. There is Scott Carroll as the. Uh, White Sox actually benefited a little bit from the layoff. They had to play a suspended game and then a regular game against Kansas City at home. That's going to be another base hit. Diaz is on with a single. Turn at second. He'll stay. Eaton will get it back in. And the Orioles keep it up. So Diaz has been up twice in the inning and reached both times once via the walk and once with a single. And that is hit number six. Robin Ventura the uh, skipper of the White Sox looking on because as we mentioned uh, they've been playing well at scoring runs pitching well very very good bullpen like Dave Robertson uh, got the uh, the win and the save and that suspended game and then the second game where they uh, came from behind with a five run fifth inning the Orioles four for four with runners in scoring position that'll go to second base Johnson is up with it. Play on Paredes, and that will do it here in the inning. But what an inning it was for the Orioles. Six runs on six hits, including this long home run. Good for three ribbies by Chris Davis, number five on the season. Ball game, he said, 2 p.m. Can everyone and be more give themselves a huge O chant, which usually comes during the national anthem on the uh, Pray for Baltimore tag. And Adam was outstanding in meeting with the press before the ball game uh, today. Had a lot of very solid things to say, and uh, particularly 
said, I understand about the kids in Baltimore, a lot of the activities that have been going on at night with some of the looting and the rioting and fires on cars, he said, have been, it's been the juveniles. He said, I was there. And he meant that literally. Growing up in San Diego, he lived in a section of the city that was very tough and where there was racial discrimination. And he said, but for baseball, I probably could have turned a corner and gone the other way and done the same thing, but I didn't. He said, those kids, I feel the pain of the kids. We need to reach out for them. He said they need a shoulder to cry on. And as leaders in the city, be they political leaders or athletes like myself, we need to do that for them. Yeah, he said his vehicle, of course, was sports. And the, the tragic thing for not only Baltimore but a lot of inner cities is, and that's why baseball trying to do the RBI programs and whatever, is to, to give people a way to uh, do something other than, you know, get in trouble or yep. whatever. And I found that in my life when I moved to Arizona, you know, until I got into sports and assimilated myself in high school, maybe hanging out with the wrong guys or whatever. So it's very easy to do. Yep. Abasel Garcia at the plate. LaRoche grounding out. Garcia comes in with a four-game hit streak. He has gone uh, three for seven against Jimenez. And, boy, Baldo right here would like to have one of those quick put-away innings after your ball club has given you a six-run lead. Pitch will miss a little bit outside in this landmark ball game of no fans in the seats. Jerry Lane's the crew chief working the plate. Hunter Wendelstadt at first, Bob Davidson at second, David Rackley, the umpire, at third base. 3 0 delivery on the way. And despite the tough circumstances, there, there had to be some smiles somewhere along the way. Adam did some of that this morning about hoping the fans could enjoy this and take a deep breath and, you know, maybe make them feel good here today as the city settles down. That ball will go into right field. That's going to be a base hit. And that'll be the first against Jimenez. Talking with the press today about the situation here in Baltimore, Adam Jones. We need this game to be played, but we need the city to be healed first. You know, the city needs to. This, that's, that's, what, that's important to me is that, uh, is that the city is healed because this is, a, this is an ongoing issue. And I just hope that uh, the, the, the community of Baltimore stays strong, the children of Baltimore stay strong and get some guidance and um, just uh, heed the message of, of the city leaders. And with one away, words of Adam Jones. We'll hear more from Adam later on, also from Buck Showalter. The full shift is put on. Gillespie at the plate. He has hit the men as hard. He is 5 for 11 against him. Connor Gillespie, the starter at third base for the White Sox. And then as we'll step off. Virtually no breeze here at the ballpark today. It is absolutely beautiful. 73 degrees at game time. Some very high clouds. But a great day in the forecast. And that's exactly what it is. Another one to rattle around in the seats. 101. Yeah, Gillespie last year, I mean, he wore out right-handers. I mean, 131 hits. Doesn't hit a lot of home runs, but uh, did get 31 doubles. And you talk to a skipper, uh, Gordon Beckham will probably play some third base, who plays it very well. He'll, but they'll probably platoon a little bit. But again, this is why this team will score some runs. And as we mentioned last, uh, what 13 games uh, over five and a half runs. That'll go to second base on the shift. Play made for one relay over to first, and there's major league double play. That was Navarro, who's moved way over. So only three come up, one hit, nobody left on. The Orioles have a six nothing lead.
selected, you get 500 for the home run hit by Chris Davis. And you get 500 more for every Orioles home run hit today. Play baseball buck scratch offs went up to 50,000 or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game. Visit mdlottery.com slash baseball. You do see people in the ballpark. That's about it right there. Those are scouts who are uh, working the ball game and are behind home plate. They, along with the uh, media, and there are a few people working, obviously, in the ballpark. But other than that, it's empty. Orioles see what they can do here in the second inning. Young had a single and a run scored in the first for Delman Young. And he'll go after the off-speed delivery by Samaja, who will make some adjustments here. All kinds of media members on hand. Press box is full uh, with reporters and photographers on hand and camera people recording this baseball game as it is, as we said, a piece of history. Yeah, yeah a lot of people uh, comments uh, that they've never been to Camden Yards before. Mm -hmm. Where's the press room? Where do we eat? Yep. What time's the game starting? Not 135? <laughs> 205. And that one's going to go down to third. That will be a foul ball. Let's take a look at our American standard. Who's hot and who's not board on it. Delman Young indeed hot. Look at the numbers at home. Adam Eaton this season on the road. Not our American standard. Uh, look celebrate the season with the American standard all star event. Visit midatlanticcomfort.com for amazing rebate and refinancing opportunities. That's amazing when uh, you lose players whether it's, it's Nick Marcake is now with Atlanta or you know again Nelson Cruz hitting home runs seems like getting three hits every day for Seattle is that other guys get to play and then you see Delman Young and it, it kind of uh, started in spring training and uh, when Buck with Showwater was talking about this is a former number one guy I mean he said uh, what five for ten now or six for twelve with runners in scoring position he plays the outfield better than people think I mean I think he sets the all-time record for uh, assists when he first came up with Tampa with like 17 in a season Delman Young will put that one up in the air down the first base line. And you can hear Abreu hollering out, I got it, and he wasn't kidding. You'll hear all of that today. <laughs> Whatever gets said will be heard. <laughs> and uh, Young retired. Orioles return to Oriole Park on Monday, May 11, to begin a stretch that includes 17 home games over a span of 21 days. First up, three games against the Blue Jays and the Angels. Good seats remain for all throughout the month. Show your Birdland pride and enjoy a great day or night at the ballpark. For tickets, Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. That'll bring up Adam Jones, the league's leading hitter, coming into the ball game. Adam uh, with a sack fly and an RBI his first time up. So we've said the Orioles have used the sack fly more already this season, it seems like. Than they did all of last year. They've got 10 sacrifice flies already this season. That was not something uh, we saw a lot of last year with all the home runs. The Orioles this year are hitting the home runs and the sack flies. That ball put up in the air to center. Eaton's got it lined up. And he will put it away. And there are two down here in the second. Well, when the Orioles win, everyone wins, and hey, there are six runs up on the board. When the Orioles win and score five or more, you get 50% off regular menu online orders at PapaJohns.com by entering promo code Orioles5. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. Valid at participating Baltimore area Papa John's. And this is already one of those games. Two down bases empty. Here is Chris Davis. And Chris will take the pitch for his strike. Home run number five, three RBIs, and a four-game hit streak all coming in that first inning. Yeah, when you talk about Jeff Samarza, when you look at all the numbers, the ability to drop off the slider, good velocity, good movement, a splitter, you go, how did he ever give up six runs in an inning? And he's probably wondering that right now. <laughs> but the only thing you can do is, Again, his this team can score runs. The team behind him, something they usually don't do when he pitches in years past. So all you got to do is try to get him out, and uh, I guess the six-run first inning is really kind of tells you something about baseball. You just never ever know. And you get into those innings, and you're saying, "How do I, I need to make a pitch?" And then you think you make a good pitch, they hit it softly. When you make a bad pitch, they hit it hard. Davis will take the pitch, and it is there for a called third strike. And there's the difference. An inning can make six runs on six hits in the first inning. Samaja retires the side in order in the second.
destination for culinary adventure, from fresh local seafood to an eclectic array of world-class cuisine. Savor Sarasota Restaurant Week is coming up June 1 through the 14th, celebrating its 10th year. For information, go to savorsarasota.com. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, and our great crew on hand to hear for this historic game, the first major league game played without a paying crowd. Lowest attended game ever. you got to go all the way back to 1882. Six fans. Troy, New York against Worcester, Massachusetts. They were National League teams at the time. Six fans there for that game. And the lowest Camden Yards attendance was April 12, 2010 at 91.29. Bunt is shown. Off-speed pitch. Jimenez gets it in there for the strike with uh, Ramirez at the plate. Yeah, slow start. Uh, last year, what, 42 extra base hits, 15 of those home runs, over 30 doubles. That ball will go into the shift. Perfectly positioned, Navarro at second base. Yeah, they tell you to hit it up the middle, and that's where the defense is. <laughs> well, let's readjust that. Maybe hit it a little bit more to right. Alexei Ramirez is retired on the ground ball. Well, you get a big lead, and sometimes I, I'm used to think, okay, Get me six runs, but do it maybe two, another one, two. When you get six, nothing changes. You still got to get the first batter out. Gary, you talk about that yeah. all the time. You know, it always sets up a double play, throw strikes, stay down in the zone. Ubaldo knows exactly what he has to do, and for him, it's just a matter of focusing. He has a couple of strikeouts, no walks. Giovanni Soto, White Sox catcher standing in. And he will take the pitch for a strike, and it will go to one and one. You're wondering why that game back in 1882 only had six fans. Uh, is because everybody had lost interest. <laughs> they, they were having bad seasons. Both franchises were told they were not going to have a franchise for the coming year, so they knew the teams weren't even going to exist. So the Troy, New York Trojans and the Worcester Mass Ruby Legs played before six at the Worcester driving park grounds. It was part of the fairgrounds. Three ball, one strike count on Soto. Now the infield will shift over. The Orioles move Navarro over on the shortstop side. 3-1 pitch. That'll be put up in the air. Jones over, over, reaching and makes a fine running catch. Adam Jones, he can chase him down, and he does so again. Well, today you can hear how well a ball's hit just because there's no crowd noise. I mean, you watch this. I mean, you can hear that it's smoked. And then it starts knuckling. And the goal Glover runs it down. Makes it look easy. Uh, Menez gets some nice help behind him from Adam Jones. What I enjoy is that when you go down and, you know, you know sometimes because of the timing of games, we don't, we're not around the cage when the other team is hitting. But when you go down and you see what the visiting team thinks of the Oriole players, mm -hmm. and the guy they bring up all the time is Adam Jones. That's the way you play the game. You know, obviously, got, you know, Jimmy Parade is as red hot as you mentioned, but the, the, the name that comes up is Adam because he is the leader. You saw that today. And is taking that role, mm -hmm. taking it on. That ball will be fouled back by Micah Johnson. Johnson batting ninth, getting the start at second base for the White Sox. The Orioles out on top here by a score of six to nothing for uh, Johnson. Opportunity to become known here as he is a rookie. Right now, Getting some regular playing time for this White Sox team. Tied for the uh, second in the American League in bunt hits and fourth in infield hits. So that tells you the speed that he brings to the game. 1 2 delivery, and that is there for a strike. So a 1 2 3 inning, third strikeout for Jimenez through the first three. Jimenez has faced the minimum nine at the plate.
second worst start in their history. Tom Hattacourt, who covers them for the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, said the worst thing a Major League Baseball team can do to its fans, the absolute worst, to fail, to fall out of the playoff picture at the very start of the season. He thinks they've done that. How about that one? Mets Marlins, an hour 58, fastest nine this year so far. And the Washington Nationals, the great comeback, 13 12 versus the Braves. That comeback, an eight run deficit against the Braves, the only the third time in Nationals history they've overcome that deficit, and only the fifth time in Braves history that they've lost a game where they had an eight or more run lead. Pitch will be taken down low. Manny Machado, double run scored. First time up. A big home run by Dan Nuggle. I was kind of watching that. You, you could sense, especially that Craig Kimbrell's now the closer for the Padres. Mm. They couldn't hold the lead. I mean, just it was a Nationals monumental comeback. Creeping isn't it? back. Yeah, I was looking at. I think the uh, the Nationals were seven and thirteen. And I'm thinking, oh no, they're going to be seven and fourteen. Mm. Big, big, big win for them. Yep. Kind of like the walk off home run that the, the Orioles hit the other night. David yep. Lowe. You know, I mean, it's yep. crushing. Yeah, it really is. And of course, it, sometimes it's a kick start. You know, you know the Nats going to be a good team. You know the Orioles are going to play play well. Just got to do it sometimes. Three ball, one strike count. Samaj just settled in for a one, two, three second inning, and that's not going to happen here. Manny Machado's got one in the gap. It'll be handled by Garcia. He'll get it in. So Manny's bat is heated up, and he is two for two. And the Orioles get a leadoff single. Well, the Monday and Tuesday regularly scheduled games against the White Sox are going to be made up in a single admission doubleheader. That's Thursday. May 28th, starting at 4:05. Tickets for Monday's game will be valid for the doubleheader, and all fans holding tickets for last night or today's originally scheduled games can exchange their tickets for any remaining home game this season, dollar for dollar basis. Tickets are subject to availability, and exchanges must be made by June 30. So you want to get on that if you get tickets. For complete details, Orioles 888-848-BIRD. Logistics. Horror show, as Buck Showalter mm -hmm. said, compared to what's going on in the city of Baltimore, yeah. it's de minimis, and it is. Nevertheless, a lot had to be done to get these get this game scheduled. That'll get down the line. That's going to be a base hit. Cabrera hot. Manny Machado on his way to third. Played with Garcia in the corner. Bobby Dickerson will hold the runner at third, and it is a double. And the Oriole bats start out again, a single and a double here in the third inning. Well, we saw that uh, on Sunday, and. Um if you don't make good pitches and Samarza has good stuff, but is he able to make quality pitches? Now you look, I mean, this is pretty much thigh high inside part of the plate. That's where lefties usually like it. Quickens the bat and then he just smokes it down into the corner and they're off and running. Well, the Orioles get a chance to add to that lead. That's their eighth hit of the ball game. Bullpen active again for the White Sox. Again, second time up. Scott Carroll again in the bullpen. Yeah, last year uh, off and on a starting pitcher for the White Sox, so he's their long guy. Both teams worked out yesterday, so it's, it's like the Orioles really haven't missed a, a, a step. Now here is Caleb Joseph, two in scoring position. The infield is in, and it'll be fouled off. Joseph got the RBI single, his first time up. Caleb's done a great job here, getting people home when given an opportunity, and he's now five for 14. With runners in scoring position this year, and here's another chance. Orioles already four for five today in these situations. 0 1 delivery on the way. And that's going to go out to left field. That's going to be a base hit. Machado will score, holding at second base. Cabrera throw comes all the way through. And Caleb Joseph is two for two with two RBIs in the ball game, and the Orioles have a 7 0 lead. Post Walker hot streak continues. Well, Scott Coolbaugh says it started at spring training. He comes on as a new hitting instructor. He got a lot of young guys because of uh, guys leaving and injuries. He said you need to be ready to hit. That's that's the important thing. Get the bat triggered where you can hit. And if you look at Flaherty, if you looked at Scope, if you look at Caleb Joseph, for young guys, they've done a nice job of changing their swings with limited at bats in the big leagues. Now first and third, still nobody out. Pitch way inside, jackknifing away is Ray Navarro. Navarro getting the start at second, flied out to right field in his first at bat. Jeff Samaja, one of his best numbers this season coming into this ball game. Runners in scoring position against him, 156 on the season. Here's the 1 0 delivery on the way, off speed pitch put up in the air, not deep. Cabrera's there, runner tagging. 
will not go as the throw comes into the cutoff man not deep enough to take the chance on. So the runners will stay at first and third here as Navarro's retired. Yeah, that's the, uh, the the amazing thing, and it tells you and gives you some indication of how well the Orioles were swinging the bat. I mean, they took uh, advantage of the the back end of the bullpen uh, on Sunday against the Red Sox. Just a little different. Yeah. This is a big league, big stuff. Potentially, I mean, he's never really played on good teams until he went to Oakland last year. Top of the uh, uh, of the rotation type of starter. Another one down to the empty seats off the bat of Alejandro De Aza. De Aza's had a walk, a run scored, and he is singled. Orioles up to seven runs on nine hits, and we are in the bottom half of the third inning. Yeah, the, the only thing that Samarz has ever done wrong is play on teams that don't play very well until they got traded to Oakland. Pitch on the way, and that will be just topped foul at the plate. Well, the White Sox certainly hoping they're going to be a lot better. They have remade this team. Doing what they uh, hoped would put them back in a playoff run the last two years. They have finished well out of any playoff spot in uh, the American League. Robin Ventura's fourth season with a ball club. And their hope is that they've now got uh, things in place, especially the bullpen that's been revamped. Ground ball back. Samaja guns it down. There's one relay over to first base. And they will get the double play. Ramirez making the turn. The Orioles will get a run, three hits, no errors, one left on. O's extend their lead to 7 0. Will he flip the ball to the empty seats? To you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by visit annapolis.org. Find the Chesapeake experience at visit annapolis.org. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer here at Camden Yards as the Orioles and White Sox match up before an empty house on this beautiful afternoon. And the Orioles will be heading out for the TROP to play three games as the home team. In St. Petersburg, Florida, against the Rays, with this weekend's scheduled home games having been transferred. Uh, Chris Tillman, Alex Colon, Miguel Gonzalez, Chris Archer, Wei and Chen, and Nathan Karn schedule starters. That one hit by Eaton to short. Play made by Cabrera. One pitch and uh, one out here in the fourth inning. Take a look at our Maryland Live Casino inside the numbers. Well, that's uh, what we talked about. Changes wind up instead of going over the head, tried to because he was. You know, one of those years where he walked 71 in about 128 innings and just could not throw strikes. So the adjustment saw Ramon Martinez, who came on as a advisor to uh, the Orioles, Dave Wallace and Dom Cheney. So strike throwing machine on the ground. And again, it's velocity, what, 86, 87, 89, not overthrowing. A lot of movement. Melky Cabrera. Matting second in the lineup. There's the off speed delivery in there for a strike. Cabrera grounded out his first time up. Melky, a switch hitter for the White Sox with one down and nobody on. Abreu waiting on deck. 
And Baldo Jimenez delivers, and that'll be off the end of the bat and foul. Cabrera this season uh, batting right handed is only one for 21 from this side of the plate. Mm -hmm. He's hitting 370, 17 for 46. Yeah, he's always uh, hit better from this side. Not that he can't hit right handed. That one on the off speed delivery he didn't get a lot of good wood on that high in the air to center. Jones is there two down. Yeah, if you if you talk to Ubaldo and or if you talk to his pitching coach Dave Wallace, they say, "What do you want to do?" Well, I want to get ahead. If I throw strike one, they get behind. Numbers go down what 40, 50 points at least on a league average. Then I can use all my pitches. He's got a splitter. He just saw a curveball that was popped up. He's doing exactly you want, and you know he's got 1,400 major league innings, so he certainly has enough experience not to let a big lead affect him in a negative way. And he has it here. Jose Abreu at the plate. Orioles 7 9 and 0. The White Sox 0 1 and 1. Abreu will go off the fists and foul. American League Rookie of the Year, of course, last season. Coming out uh, for the White Sox with a tremendous 317 batting average, 36 home runs, and 107 RBIs. And he will foul that one in the same place. Well, the, the, the league average would. And I'm talking about Major League Baseball was 176 with two strikes. That tells you how hard it is. He had 257. And they all say, well, this guy is going to come out of Cuba. He's going to be the best player. You're looking at him right here. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine anybody being better than Jose Abreu. And a pitch that swung on and missed. And Jimenez right now is dealing. That's his fourth strikeout. No walks. Retires the side in order. His third 1-2-3 inning. Just listen. Uh, here. Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> Paredes at the plate. Jimmy Paredes and a swing and a miss. The sounds of silence here at Camden Yards on this historic ball game with no one in the ballpark but the players, the press. Couple of scouts. Yeah, those were uh, people past where all the statues are. Yes. That noise. Those who were cheering outside the gates, they've been there. They've uh, they've done their part here in the ball game. And the Orioles have certainly done theirs. With a seven nothing lead here in the bottom half of the fourth inning, Paredes reached on an error, scored in the first inning, uh, grounded out in the first inning to end the inning. 1 2 delivery on the way and a swing and a foul tip into the mitt, and that'll be the second strikeout for Samaja. Right 
can just hear everything. <laughs> Adam Jones just waved up here. <laughs> Ground ball going down to third, backhanded. Gillespie's got to throw over to first. And Young is retired. And there are two away here in the fourth. I inning. mean, it certainly does have the feel of what you do in spring training. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you play the B games. I still remember pitching a B game at 11 o'clock in the morning. I look over, there's Joan Jett. She had a, didn't have the black cards with her, so she was by herself. <laughs> it wasn't a very big crowd. <laughs> and she had been in my no hitter. I said, what, hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm with Sting tonight at the Hollywood Sportatorium. What are you doing tonight? I said, well, I'm actually, my kids, my girls are down. Why don't you come? Backstage oh, passes. Very yeah. nice. See, it does pay to get up early. Yeah, and Ben pitch at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, you know, I mean, Joan Jett was a big Oriole fan. Uh, grew up in yeah. Silver Spring. Was that my no-hitter? <laughs> Traded the underwear poster to her Easy motorcycle now. one. <laughs> and, you know. And, and I, I, said, I said to Sammy Stewart, who had the locker next to me, I said, who's, who's the girl with all the leather? It was the day before we started. One of the years, probably like 75 or 76. Yeah, oh, that's Joan Jett. I said, where are the black cards? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Down to third, ripped and just foul. Found play made right there. Unfortunately, no crowd to applaud her. And she'll put it back in the bag. Have you seen the – we were talking about, despite the seriousness, obviously, of why this game's being played as it is in an empty ballpark, there has been some smiles here with some of the players. They come off, first baseman in particular, inside, throwing the ball into the stands as they normally would to fans. Adam Jones came out and bowed to the people out in the bullpen area earlier in the ball game. Uh, we, we've seen some of the people who, few security people working, throwing balls out of the stands back out to the ball, girls and boys on the side. Caleb Joseph, before the game, got involved in some of this. He signed a fake autograph, congratulated the fans, did his Cal Ripken impersonation. <laughs> and, and kept going all the way out to center field. <laughs> there you go. Well, incidentally, uh, Cal Ripken uh, Jr. was here today. Yeah. He stopped by early this morning. 2-2 Do -do delivery, foul tipped, and that too ends up in the midst. So a couple of strikeouts for Samaja. It's been all or nothing here in the innings through four. He's retired the side in order in two, but not the other two. Comfort.com for amazing rebate and financing opportunities. Camden Yards, the site. Orioles and the White Sox, first meeting of the year for both of these teams. This is the first time they have played outside their respective divisions on the year. And here at the uh, quiet Camden Yards, Jimenez quietly pursuing a successful game. He hasn't walked anybody, he has struck out four. He's retired the side in order in three of the four innings. There's been only one hit. A Garcia single in the second eliminated via a ground ball double play. So he has faced the minimum 
number of White Sox hitters through the first four innings of the ball game. Well, he's doing exactly what he did in his uh, first start after Toronto scored what 12 runs in the first game of the year. But Norris started the uh, the home opener. At least the, the, it was the fourth game of the season, but the first one at Camden Yards, a, a one hitter through seven. Showed bunt with the infield shifted around. We'll take the pitch for a strike. Didn't think it was. One and two. LaRoche grounded out his first time up. One of the additions to bring some power into this offense. Yeah, LaRoche I don't know. Seven yeah. for 20 off of Menez with a homer. Right, and he, what he'll bring is somewhere if he gets to play a lot, which he will, either as a DH. And see, that's what happens when you kind of talk to the umpire. <laughs> You know, you talk him into maybe giving you an extra strike to hit because that curve, that fastball ran back and probably caught the inside. But he's going to be 20, 25 home runs or more. 2 2 delivery will miss, and the count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. Dead low ball hitter. Loves to walk. So it's one of these situations. Uh, you're, you're in the fifth inning. Yeah, 7 nothing. But as we mentioned, at least over the last 13 games, they've been scoring a lot of runs. 3 2 delivery inside, and uh, there is the first walk. Men is just unhappy with himself. Leadoff walk here in the fifth inning. Voting ends tomorrow at midnight for this year's AT&T Fans Choice Bobblehead promotion. Go to Orioles.com slash bobblehead. Vote for Britton, Chen, O'Day, Norris, or Pierce. You can uh, find the numbers there. One for Britton, two Chen, three O'Day, four Norris, five Pierce. Three one eight two six. Each time you text your vote, you'll automatically be entered to win a VIP experience, tickets to an upcoming event, autograph bobblehead, and an on-field experience. Ground ball will head down to third base. That'll be handled by Machado. Only play at first one hopper. Not going to get him. So Garcia is on with an infield single, and the White Sox get their first real offensive chance of the day. Two on, nobody out here in the fifth. Well, we've seen uh, coming into uh, really the weekend series, uh, last weekend series with the Red Sox, uh, how walks have hurt. Uh, right there, I mean, it looked like, you know, nice pitch, good sinker. Garcia hit a bullet into right field. You make a better pitch, and he beats it out. He can run for a big guy. Yeah. Well, let's see what they can do here against Jimenez. See what he can do, try and hold him down. Two on, nobody out. Connor Gillespie at the plate. Gillespie hit into a double play his first time up. Righty lefty differential on the season this year for him, and there's not much of a difference at all. 133 left handers, 135 right handers, and he's given up a home run to one from each side of the plate. So at least early on, numbers almost exactly the same. In fact, that was true for last year. It wasn't much of a difference either. That'll go to left. Deaza going back. Runners are halfway. He'll put it away. They'll go back to their bases, and there's one down. Get in on the baseball action with Masson. Text the word Orioles to 29292 for team alerts. Chances to win exclusive prizes all season long, including meet and greets with your favorite players. Again, that's Orioles to 29292 for Orioles alerts. You can't miss. To all of the great people here in Baltimore who may be listening, obviously all of us with our Great hopes for this city to remain calm and for the matters that need to be taken care of to be done in a uh, in a proper way. And to all the great people that went out yesterday to help clean up Baltimore and the ravaged parts of the city, many great residents who uh, on their own went out on the streets, brooms, dustpans, boxes in hand to try and clean up the areas that had been uh, in large part destroyed in some blocks. Uh, a great show of what this city is all about. And hopefully it will remain that way for uh, forever. 2-0 delivery on the way. That will be on the outside corner for a strike. Alexei Ramirez. Two ball, one strike, count one down. Uh, so many people, Jim, we did text from calls and everything from people around the world, as you said, in the open, asking, you know, what's it like? How do you feel? It's so hard to define those things, but but there's no question there's a great deal of sadness in this city. Oh, there is. And, and you know, most of the people, I've been here now what, before the, the, the rise of 68, and people still talking about those because it was so damaging to the city. And I guess, you know, in baseball you're kind of taught when you're young, and I think it's difficult sometimes you don't want to wear your emotions on your sleeve. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately that's hard to do. It's just so many different ways or better ways. I, 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 unfortunately, but also fortunately, the message I think has been heard loud and clear. Yeah. It's just not yeah. the, the way you want it to get heard. 2-2 yeah. two, two delivery on the way headed to the hole. Manny Machado cuts it off, force it uh -huh. second. That's going to go into right field. 
That will score LaRoche. Backed up on the play by Young. Runners will advance. So LaRoche will come in. It will be an error charged on Manny Machado. No RBI on that, but a break for the White Sox and a chance to have a bigger inning. What we're talking about with the city, Adam Jones, who has been here for his career, he talked about these things prior to the game today. The youth are hurting. And I think, you know, as, as the older guys, the older community, um, we owe it to the youth to, to continue to educate them, continue to strengthen them, continue to be by their sides, because that's what they need. You know, I don't think they need more antagonizing. I think they just they need they need a shoulder to cry on, and I think I think the city leaders can can uh, can be that for these kids and for the community. And Adam certainly has tried to be part of that. He is part of it. Uh, he as he uh, anybody who knows him, it's not just about money that he gives, and he does do that. But he gives time. He's out there. He goes out. He sees oh, yeah. the kids. He goes to the libraries. He goes to the boys and girls clubs. He's got two facilities. Baseball facilities he's already put together in the city working on another. Ground ball between the legs will go to Short Cabrero, make the play over to first base. That will be an RBI for Soto. Second run will cross Garcia, and it is a 7 to 2 ball game, and all of a sudden that 7 0 lead doesn't look well, like exactly, and that's what you want to do. Uh, the, the way it's gone about because of the error by by Manny, I mean, Manny makes a great play to get to the ball and just did not make a good throw. It wasn't an easy play because he looked like he caught, uh, you know, lost his balance. But, yeah, you want know, to, you want, if you're Robin Ventura and his legion of Red, uh, White Sox, you, you want to get their bullpen up. You want Buck Showalter Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, off day tomorrow, you know, rested bullpen. You want to get Jimenez out of the game wherever it takes and take your chance. Because their bullpen is better than the Orioles statistically. Down the line and foul. And if you get a base hit here, even though you should be out of the inning because you get the extra out, all of a sudden they're they're where they want to be. Yep. And a big at bat right here in order to cut into that lead even more. Runner on at second base, Ramirez, good speed. Micah Johnson, strikeout victim, his first time up, two down. 0 2 delivery to him, slap to second base. That'll be handled by Navarro. He gets it over there on a close play, but he records the out. So two unearned runs on a hit and an error make it a seven to two game. Big leagues is difficult. It's really insensitive to everything else that's going on. It's a small thing for, for us, comparatively speaking. And uh, I, I uh, you know, one of the things we 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 all, not just me, tried to do when when I came here was eliminate excuses. You know, I don't want to hear about payrolls. I don't want to hear about things like that. You know, this is different. You know, some are self-inflicted. And quite frankly, uh, I feel like, you know, from the way I look at it, it is self-inflicted. You know, even though someone in our locker room didn't, but it's, it's, you know, we're citizens of this community, and if something's going on here that creates this type of situation, it's a reflection on all of us. We should look at it that way. 
Look, Showaller uh, comments before the ball game today, and the Orioles playing this game before an empty house. In fact, they've got to play what would have been home games in St. Petersburg at the uh, Trop coming up this weekend. Davis gets one. Is that one down the line fair? It's going to be foul into the seats. He's already delivered a home run. Chris got one in the first inning, three RBIs, fifth of the year. Strikeout victim his second time up. Yeah, a little change up, and again, when he gets the barrel of the bat to the ball, it has the ability to travel a long way, and the three-run home run made a big, big difference. Jumping on Samaja's pitches here, Samaja hanging in. Well, the one, yeah, one thing, and both of us, we were around the locker room today, and everybody, I think, understands that how important the Orioles are to this community and how important the community is to the Orioles. So nobody is complaining about having to do what they have to do. Play's got to be made by Soto. And, and you know, and you don't play for Buck Showalter, and as he mentioned, you know, it's, it's, it, he has a tr it, he has a tremendous sense, I just think, of, of history and tradition and whether it's about baseball or the city. I mean, Buck gets it. Yeah. And his players get it. You, you, you can't be on this team because he's created a new culture here along with Dan Duquette. And, and they've done that in about four years. So you just, it's, it's, they're well balanced both on and off the field. I mean, I know that's maybe that's an understatement, but. So going down to Tampa, playing the day and the day, that it's, hey, this is what we do. This yep. is what we have to do. Yeah, and and they know you know, games, you know, it's an important game because it goes in the win and loss column, but it's not important with the big picture. That's Buck's comments. I don't want to hear any complaints. <laughs> Here is uh, Manny Machado. Machado already two for two, double single and a run scored. Manny's now had four hits and five at bats off Samaja, including a home run. 2-0 delivery. That one lifted up in the air. Left center field. Back warning track. Way back wall. And goodbye home run. He's got two off Samaja. What a day for Manny Machado. Three for three in three at-bats. And he will cross the plate for the third time in this ball game. And the Orioles lead at 8-2. to two. Yeah, made the error. And he atones for it. I mean, two-run score for the White Sox. And he drives in one. I think he's the only guy that didn't get a hit on Sunday when the Orioles got 20 hits. But what he did do, and to me it's very important, is he walked twice. Because when he walks, he's got a pretty good idea of the strike zone. So the average coming up came in at, what, 224. But you talked about it. I mean, runners in scoring position, you know, 328 the last two years. And just a hanging slider. And Samars is wondering if it's going to stay in the ballpark. Not here in Baltimore. Ten hits for the Orioles. Yeah, the perfect pitch to hit. Great extension, the slider, uh, you know, at 86, 87 fastball. We've seen up to 95. So it allows you to get the bat head where if you're pitching, you don't want it out in front. And the pitch taken up high. So the Orioles, two home runs today, 29 on the year. They came into the day fourth in home runs only because they hadn't played a couple of ball games. Now they had been number one in the major leagues in that department. So Manny picks up his fourth of the year now needs a triple for a cycle that is taken for a strike by Everett Cabrera Cabrera's had two doubles in the ball game he has scored a run and has picked up an RBI in this lineup all except for Ray Navarro everybody's contributed either a hit an RBI or a run scored that will be foul back and the three two count on the Orioles number eight hitter or in this case, seven. Yeah, the uh, the White Sox go to Minnesota. They'll play tomorrow night. So, so Marcia now pitch count, as you see, at 81. A lot of fastballs. He's saving the bullpen. My theory was if you gave up more runs than you wanted to give up, the only way that your ERA even, even wouldn't get higher is get some outs. And that's what he's doing. Yep. 3.33 3 coming in. And the menace has, again, been very, very good. Three ball, two strike count. One down, bases are empty. And foul tipped into the mid. We've had uh, four of those kind of strikeouts here in the ball game. Five total Ks by Samaja in the game. And there are two down. Well, he struck out four out of the last six. It's just a, in between. Hagan slider, change up in the middle of the plate right there. 90, 93 on the corner. You can't really get a whole lot better than that. It, 
I think you learn about him. He's going to be a free agent unless the White Sox re-sign him. So you look at these kind of things, and you, you know, obviously not pitching as well as he would like, but giving you. Don Cooper said it best. He said, "I thought he really battles hitters, even though he struggled today. But after the fight, I like him even more." <laughs> and the reason for that is because he was out protecting his team. That's the fight, of course, with Kansas City that the White Sox had with the Royals. Brouhaha Samaja was one of a number of players who uh, had a five-game suspension. He has appealed it, which is why he is able to pitch here today. Swing and a miss by Caleb Joseph. Joseph has had two base hits, and he has picked up two RBIs. Six runs batted in now for the Orioles catcher, pumping his average up a little more above that 300 mark, up to uh, 340. 1 2 delivery on the way, and that ball in the air to right field. It was played very shallow. Garcia going back and will make the catch on the warning track. And that will retire the side, but the Orioles add another. Manny Machado, one swing of the bat, drives run out. Three for three in the ballgame. Home run number four. 8 2 Orioles. Day about 74 degrees, sun shining. It is so pretty outside. Gary Thorne, Jim Palmer, with you, uh, and uh, obviously hoping the city settles in. Uh, Jim, very. It was pretty quiet, very quiet last night. A little problem at one area only, but it didn't last. The curfew worked, I think, and uh, trying to get back to normal. Well, yeah, and, and I think again, this is a great pla place to live. I mean, I've been here. Everybody's made kind of big deal out of it. My 50th year, so I've gone through a lot of things, but. I mean, I was proud of how everybody got involved. Uh, Adam Jones kind of talked about it. You know, a lot of the leaders in the black community, and, you know, this is a town where if you go downtown, it doesn't matter what color you are. So hopefully they will be able to, um, you know, hear the people that need help. And, I, you know, I think Adam, again, said it so well. He said, you know, kids are crying out for help, whether it's education, whether it's a, an avenue out of, uh, you know, poverty, uh, and so forth, and you know, hopefully they'll be able to give them a better direction. And they've been talking about it for years. Yeah, that's right. That's that to me is the saddest part of all is that we that these are not new issues, and they have not been expressed in a new way here. It's just been repeated again. There are underlying causes about education, the money for schools. Adam talked about the money for inner city kids youth programs that uh, continue to be stripped away. That one down the line, and it ends up costing, I think, this country a whole lot more by doing that than by taking care of some of the business. So hopefully be able to take care of some of the business here and, and some of the underlying causes can be gotten to. Uh, and still some concern. I mean, there's the report the young man who died in police custody and the question of how did that happen remains an issue. That'll go to left field, Eaton there to get it. And one of the concerns here in the city is that that report could come out at any time. It's going to be later than was expected as to what happened and why. And when that comes out, what will the reaction of the city be again? So it looks like the National Guard, state police will remain in the city at least until that report comes out in order to 
hopefully keep the quiet. Well, yeah, and, and it, it, to me it's a no-win situation because it's not going to be something on Friday when you're going to get part of the report that it's going to be black and white. So I thought the, the Governor Larry Hogan said, listen, we know how important Baltimore is to the state of Maryland, which is why they've given them so much of their resources. I mean, it was surreal yesterday walking in, you know, National Guardsmen, state troopers, uh, and, uh, you know, one of the, I think the uh, – female general of the National Guard said, you know, these are people that live in Maryland. They care about the city of Baltimore. So I think we all do. And, you know, again, I, I think that the, you know, the people that rioted, it wasn't the right thing to do. But they made it very clear that we need change here. And hopefully that will happen. And it's not going to happen overnight. And that's, I, I would implore people to just be calm. And for the leaders to get it started. It's not going to happen yeah, overnight, yeah. but you've got to start. And I think we've done that in this country in other places and as an, on a national level. Now here in Baltimore, it's, it's got to be worked on. A two-ball, one-strike count on Cabrera. Melky Cabrera, one down and nobody on. We are in the sixth inning, 8-2 lead. Orioles on top after a big first inning in which the Orioles put away six runs, six hits. They've added to that and... Right now, for Robin Ventura, Scott Carroll either comes in or he's done for the day. This is the third time he's been up in the bullpen. Yeah, so Marza gives him five innings. Obviously not what he wanted, but uh, he didn't really have to go to your bullpen. They don't have the luxury, even though they've had two days off, of having the off day. They will travel to, to Minnesota. You can see that. I mean, that kind of sums it all up. How did they – I mean, he's a good pitcher, a really good pitcher. I'd be very surprised if he doesn't have a good year. Can Navarro play this one? Outfield grass bobbles and will not. Could not get the handle on it. Got over there. That'll be a base hit for Cabrera. So he is on with one away here in the sixth inning. That's only going to be the third hit. All singles off him in it. I mean, I just didn't catch it. It got to it pretty quick. I mean, the transition of dirt to grass. But again, in the glove, out of the glove, and off the knee. And this is what they want. It's eight to two. They're, they're just going to keep, you know, nibbling away, and now they're into the heart of the lineup, and they have a base runner on with only one out. 76 pitches thrown by Jimenez so far in the ball game in the middle of the order with Abreu, as Jim said. Pitch will be taken for a strike. Abreu has struck out twice in the ball game for Jose Abreu, very on Abreu-like. He's uh, had four walks, 14 strikeouts on the year now, 14 RBIs, leads the ball club. Ground ball down to third base. Manny Machado, they'll have to hustle it over, and they will, and they'll turn the double play. So the Orioles, second time in the ball game, a double play has helped Jimenez. No runs a hit, and one left on 8-2-0. Uh, time for our Geico game highlights, and boy, do the Orioles uh, take right off where they left off on uh, Sunday with uh, 18 home runs, 20 hits, the three-run home run by Davis, and then uh, Caleb Joseph, couple hits today, a couple of RBIs, and the Orioles uh, just uh, all kinds of 
base hits. And meanwhile, Jimenez, who did not get much run support, about three and a half runs a game early runs today. And uh, Jeff Samarja will leave the game. And again, a you know, good pitcher, made a couple of bad pitches. Orioles have a six run first inning. And those are our Ge Geico game highlights. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit geico.com for a free rate quote. And Scott Carroll comes on uh, last year. He was called up on Sunday from Triple A Charlotte, where he's a starting pitcher. Uh, so last year, 26 games, 19 of those starts. A big tall guy. He's been around uh, you know, Cincinnati and then a free agent signed with the White Sox back in 2012. Uh, 30 years old. Good sinker. Sinker ball pitcher with a, you know, breaking ball to go with it. So Carolina, as the bullpen goes to work now for the White Sox and the Orioles, Ray Navarro will be leading it off 0 for 2, a couple of fly ball outs, and the pitch is in there for a strike. This bullpen of the White Sox vastly improved at least early on from last year. Their bullpen last year had the second highest ERA in the American League. They are fourth in the American League coming into this ball game. Well, Don Cooper said, listen, we have a closer, Dave Robinson. The Orioles certainly know about him. Uh, was with the Yankees. Outstanding. Uh, win and a, a save uh, on a Sunday. Uh, and then, of course, they also got Dan Jettings. Navarro will go to first base. Sabreu will make the flip. Carroll over there to cover. Navarro is retired. One down, sixth inning. Not too late to upgrade your summer. The Orioles partial season plan still available. Members enjoy exclusive ticket savings. Major League Baseball's most flexible exchange policy. Access to postseason tickets and orange carpet benefits. 13 game plans still available. For details, Orioles.com slash season or 888-848-BIRD. He has a base hit a walk and he is hit into a double play. He has scored a run in the game for uh, Alejandro de Aza, as with all players when you get an opportunity to go up against a, a team you once played for whether they say it or not there's always a little added incentive and he certainly knows Scott Carroll because they were teammates last year. I mean all you got to do is look at Carroll's number coming up through the minor league and he was a third round uh, draft choice. I mean, 186 hits in 145 in the third innings last year, 147 hits, 129 innings. He pitches the contact, and that's why the sinker changeup works. But he doesn't, he's never going to light up the radar gun. 1 1 delivery, that's going to go to first. Abreu will handle line drive easily. And Ayaza is retired, and there are two down. Take a look at our PNC minor league report, and it's about Zach Davis. Yeah, well, they like him. They throw strikes. Uh, you know, very impressive uh, in spring training. And uh, again, you're looking at guys that throw a lot of strikes. And, and Buck Showalter was talking about. I mean, how good the the, the pitch uh, uh, the pitching has been at Triple A Norfolk, uh, back to back uh, shutouts. Here is Paredes up with two down and nobody on. Paredes reached on an error, scored in the first inning. Has grounded out, struck out since. Only one of those runs in the first inning for the Orioles was unearned. Both runs by the White Sox in the fifth inning were unearned. Each team uh, has committed an error. Orioles have left three on. The White Sox only one. 1-0 one -oh delivery. That'll be foul back and out of play. Count goes 1-1. One -one. Yeah, so when you're, you're as hot as Jimmy Paredes, and they got four hits uh, on Saturday, three on Sunday as you mentioned uh, over the course of that that weekend against the Red Sox eight hits they're going to mess with you they're going to be you see a lot more change ups they know he can hit the fastball they know he'd rather get his arms extended that's where your advanced scouting comes in one one delivery that one came in on the fifth and will be fouled away one ball two strike count eight ten and one for the Orioles two three and one for the White Sox. And again, the doubleheader will be coming up on May 28th. The two games that were missed in this series, it'll be a single admission doubleheader that will start at 4 o'clock on Thursday, May 28th. What was going to be an off day, now a doubleheader day here at Camden Yards. The Orioles will head out for Friday, Saturday, Sunday games in Tampa. They'll be the home team against the Tampa Bay Rays. And a swing and a miss. That one down and away. And a solid inning for Carroll as he gets the strikeout, retires the side in order. Looking on.
we get to know a lot of the people that we live around, a lot of the people that, that we interact with each and every day. And uh, it's unfortunate. It, it just is really unfortunate. And um, it's a little scary because you just don't know what's going to happen. Um, you, you try and put your faith in, in those people that are responsible, that are making the decisions higher up, that, that everything's going to be okay, that, that they can get control of it. And, and you're thankful for those brave uh, men and women that are out there trying to uh, preserve peace and, and, and trying to protect. Caleb Joseph, before the ball game, the Oriole catcher. He's had himself a solid day on the field as well with a couple of hits and two RBIs. We go to the seventh inning. The Orioles on top by six. LaRoche to the plate. Menes has gone the distance for the Orioles. That one will be fouled away. LaRoche scoring one of the two unearned runs in the fifth as he led that inning off for the walk. The only one surrendered by Jimenez so far. Yeah, 18, uh, 18 outs on 80 pitches. And that was a problem. Not only the base on balls, but the pitch count last year up over 18 pitches per inning. Not the case today. And there's a pitch that just is under the strike zone. And so one thing about Adam LaRoche, uh, he can hit home runs. He you know, pretty good first baseman. 35 year old acquisition by the White Sox, but he also very discerning eye makes you throw it over. And he will take that one away. Yeah, those are you know young young hitters are probably waving at those pitches. Veterans that takes that. Change up right off the corner. Two ball, two strike count. His dad, Dave LaRoche, Lalob, as he was known, <laughs> played for these White Sox. So his son has joined the team. Swung on and missed. And you can see by the way the reaction of a lot of these White Sox players after at bats with Jimenez is like they're just not getting good cuts. Well, this is movement. I mean, this is a fastball. So it, it, it's not about velocity. Can you stay behind your stuff? And last year he couldn't, but he, you, you change your wind up. Ramon Martinez said, you know, you're a tall guy, uh, you know, Ubaldo, as is Ramon and you know, Ramon won 20 games. He comes over with the Orioles. They're both from the Dominican Republic. They speak the same language. You need to make some adjustments. There's a good changeup, but not a splitter, but a good changeup. And you do it because Abisail Garcia is two for two off you. So what kind of options do you have? And good pitchers can get guys out different ways. And today, Ubaldo has been able to do that. Tap foul again out in front of it. Garcia. Couple of singles in the ball game uh, today, so he's got a five-game hit streak now for the White Sox. Avisal Garcia, another one of the fine young players they've got out in right field. He's now at five hits in nine at bats against Jimenez. Bullpen action again for the White Sox. Got jammed on that one and will fight it off against the White Sox for Jimenez in his career, 11th career start, two and three record. ERA just over five against them. Last faced them in 2014, right here in this ballpark, and then gave up uh, four runs, eight hits. Not doing that today. Strikeouts piling up for him. That's six in the ball game. Yeah, back-to-back -back strikeouts, and uh, one was in. He ran it in on LaRoche's front hip, and then uh, turned it back, and then right there, low and away to Garcia, after a couple of changeups that got him out in front. He had eight strikeouts in his opener against Toronto, two against Boston. He got ejected in the fourth, of course, and then six against Toronto in his last outing that was five innings. So two down, nobody on, seventh inning. Ball put up in the air towards left field. Deaza coming hard. He'll get under it, and he's got it. Now the most unusual seventh inning stretch in the history of baseball. There is nobody to get up to stretch.
Brought to you by DraftKings. Play daily fantasy baseball for free on DraftKings.com. And a promo code triple play for free entry. And by Ocean City, Maryland. Put your vacation days to good use in Ocean City, Maryland. Book now at OCOcean.com. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer, great to have you with us here. It is an 8-2 Orioles lead. Baldo Jimenez, the starter and the manager, talking to him. How you feeling? How you doing? Nice game. Dave Wallace, you're done. <laughs> and not because of pitch count or inability to get hitters out. It's just because I think they want their bullpen to get some innings. Yep. Kevin Gosman's up in the bullpen for the Orioles. Yeah, it's probably been a week since he's pitched. That'll bring Delman Young to the plate here as we go to the bottom of the seventh. One for three. Set a base hit and a run scored. One hopper, Ramirez. And one down. This past February, the Orioles served as the mission engagement chair of the American Art Association's Heart Mall. Together, the Orioles event chair, Sun Trust, helped raise more than 679000 for cardiovascular disease research, education, and advocacy. The Orioles thank sponsors Care First, the Economic Alliance of Greater Baltimore, and the Horseshoe Casino. Please visit Orioles.com slash AHA for info on how you can do your part for the cause. Now, we talked today because nobody's in the yard about the appropriate way to broadcast. So with Adam Jones coming up here in the seventh inning, Jones approach to the plate with Carroll delivering. Jones will whack the son of a gun to center field. That's very deep. It's deep, and it's off the base of the wall. He will head to second base. Adam Jones has a double, and that green jacket is well within reach, Jim. First baseman, number 19, Chris Davis. That was our master's voice. Well, that's right. That ball was whacked. They don't whack a golf ball. <laughs> but he whacked this one. I'm telling you. There you go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you're going to do it. Well, that was uh, look. I give I credit. Don, our producer, <laughs> she emails me this morning. She says, "Okay, what voice are you going to use? Will it be the master's voice, <laughs> or will it be your free baseball for everybody voice?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> I have no idea. I had coffee yet. How did I know? Fouled away by Davis. The Orioles with a runner on it. Sunk it at one down. Well, I'm certainly not going to do my. Uh, Gary McCord and tell him how, how <laughs> slick the greens are <laughs> because he hasn't worked the master since then. Because you want to work for 51 <laughs> years here. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, and the uh, pitch is taken away one on one. Well, in, in a, uh, I will say this in a normal voice, you yeah. know, you always talk about uh, taking crowds if you're on the road, taking the crowd out of the, the game and all that. Six runs in the first inning. Uh, certainly helped to take the White Sox out of this game. Uh, you know, and Jeff Marzik, he can pitch. You know, overwhelming stuff coming off a couple of good games, and then all of a sudden, Orioles put six runs, and it just makes it it makes it harder for them to be engaged in this game. Yep. Doesn't mean that Jimenez it's any easier to pitch. Doesn't even take anything away from the Oriole hitters, but it's part of the game. As a starter, you want to make your guys think they have a chance to win. One two delivery on the way. That one the other way, very deep in left field. Fair is there to put it away. Jones will go back to second, and there are two down. Take a look at our Alexis Atowson drive of the game. Manny Machado coming up in his last at bat. That gets a hanging slider, and uh, again, he's he's red hot, and you know, double, single, home run. That's uh, he's uh, now what a triple away from the uh, the, uh, the the cycle. Drive of the game brought to you by Alexis Atowson, the area's number one volume Lexus dealer, five years running. See why LexusAtowson.com. Two away, runner on at second base. So let's see what Machado does with this fourth plate appearance. Orioles now, another chance to score here. Pitch on the outside corner. Knowing the superstitions of the manager, Buck Showalter, Susan Waldman, the fine announcer for the New York Yankees, working today, sent a text along. She said, uh, six runs in the first inning. Buck will never allow a fan back in the building. Probably. <laughs> 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 Pitch is taken inside. One on one. Well, thank you, Susan. But uh, they <laughs> did. Uh, they did have a couple of six runs inning on Sunday. So they, uh, when the Orioles get back in town, you can come back out. Hopefully, everything. That's right. Will have settled down here. And doesn't matter whether there are people in the house or not. The Orioles have six run innings. One ball, one strike count with two away, and that ground ball towards second base. In front of it, Johnson will make the play over the first. 
And that's it for seven. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Orioles on top, 8-2. Pitching change. It's time for a little relief for your car, too. Visit Jiffy Lube for regular oil changes and help prevent damage and wear to your engine. Jiffy Lube, drive in today. Kevin Gosman, uh, last pitch on the 22nd of April, and that was up in Toronto. So uh, he'll have a chance, a couple of innings, a couple of hits, three strikeouts, a lot of fastballs. You know, still working on the slider. Uh, it hasn't probably been as good as it was when he was out of the bullpen the year before last, but. Again, you know, power arm, and the Orioles are looking for another six outs to end this game. 8 2 lead going into the eighth inning, and the White Sox will send Alexei Ramirez to the plate, and Ramirez will take the pitch for his strike. Orioles will make defensive changes in left on the left side of your screen. David Lowe comes in to play, and uh, Deaza moves from left to right. Delman Young out of the ball game. And that one will be bounced. By Kevin Gosman and a one ball one strike count. So the Orioles big offensive explosion six runs six hits in that first inning and have not looked back. And as Jim said with the work of Abaldo Jimenez he had retired eight in a row from the end of the second through the fourth inning just held on to that lead tired the side in order in uh, three of the first four innings of the ball game. It's really effective and trying to improve his mark to two and one. His ERA has dropped from 2.3 to 1.59 for Jimenez because the runs that were scored today were unearned, two unearned runs on four hits. Well, you go back to last season, he uh, inks a $50 million deal, which was the highest uh, free agent contract ever to an Oriole pitcher. Starts out 0 and 4. When he pitched well, he didn't play well, didn't score him a lot of runs, and then he was wild in a lot of other games. You know, the pitch count would get him. This year, totally different start. And it didn't happen by accident either. No. And, and this I, was the pitcher who was talked about if Jimenez mm -hmm. didn't have a good spring or didn't come into the season and do well, that Kevin Gosman was the one who probably would get moved into that spot. Fouled off, just tip foul at the plate. Two ball, two strike. Count. Well, that's a nice option to uh, to have. And you know, Kevin pitched very well. I mean, started very well. Low ERA. You know, in the the low threes last year. So again, you know, a couple what three years removed from. Louisiana State number one draft choice come a long way and will be a starter at some point one has to believe not necessarily this year only well, went seven and seven uh, you know he got post work at uh, season work 
you know, not very many walks, 38 of them in 113 innings, a lot of strikeouts, 88. Power arm, can throw close to 100. Good by. That is there in the inside corner at the knees. Can't place that one any better than that. And he gets the strikeout. That's the seventh White Sox to strike out today. Yeah, that's his comfort zone uh, inside, and this is where they go. You know, that ball with tremendous sink right on the corner, you know, or at least in that neighborhood. So 93 down and in. Ramirez thinks it might be, or at least hoping it might be off the plate, and it isn't. RBI and a ground ball out for Soto, who is 0 for 2 in the ball game, going through a little downward incline at the moment. He's only had one hit in his last 16 at bats, covering the last six games that he has played in. Giovanni Soto, 1 0 count, 1 down. Osmond's pitch to him, and that will be there on the inside corner. One ball, one strike. One one delivery on the way. When I heard we were going to play this before a, an empty house, I thought a long time ago. I remember Bill Russell. There was an article in Sports Illustrated. I mean, we're talking back in the 60s sometime, where Bill Russell, former great Celtic center, said, "Someday the NBA will play all of its games in a studio. It will be built for basketball because that's where the money comes from. Its TV revenue won't need fans." I think Bill was wrong about that. I think fans have a tremendous impact on all sporting events. But I thought of that today and what it would be like if every game was played in an empty studio built for baseball. And he did go around on that. Another strikeout, two of them, Soto retired. Well, you lose a lot of the intrinsic values uh, that the, as, as a franchise, your home field advantage, the fact that you, you know, I mean, if you go, if you talk to people that ever had to play against the Russells and the Koozies and, the, you know, the Havlicek's and, uh, you know, Tom Heights, and, and here's another pitch at this high fastball, they'll all tell you. Well, you know, there were dead spots in the floor in Boston. It was a hot. I mean, it was like playing a 98 degree temperature. Uh, you know, so they had that's your home field advantage. Yep. And, they, you know, they knew where the dead spots were. They were also the Celtics. They had they had Russell, right our back yeah. and knew where the heat where yeah. the thermostat was. Well, right. Exactly. Yeah. And so but fans, I mean, I still remember last year when they clinched it. Thirty nine thousand yep. people in orange. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you just you don't ever forget those things. Ground ball will go to Saga base. Navarro is there to make the play. And a very solid inning as Kevin Gosden comes on, retires the side in order. The Orioles on top, 8 2. The mound against Chris Tillman, game one, three game set against the Rays in Tampa. Our coverage on Masson 2 will begin at 6 30 with those extra presented by Jeep, followed by game coverage at 7. All the access you need right here on Masson. The Orioles, of course, will be the home team as you take a look at the upcoming uh, schedule brought to you by Mile One Automotive, offering you 20 convenient locations throughout the Baltimore area. Visit them in store or online at mileone.com. Home games. Against the Rays, uh, even though they're playing at the uh, Trop, and then on to New York, and of course it's both the Mets and the Yankees 
The Orioles will be staying in New York for the week for those games. Yeah, six. Yeah, six. Well, they'll, I, I, I guess they'll probably go late on uh, Monday on the off day. Well, Carlos Rodon. Uh, uh, out of North Carolina State, their number one draft choice, and uh, had a chance. I was actually talking to Don Cooper on Monday, and he came walking by, so he introduced me, and he said, "Wait till you see this kid." Now the ERA is high because he's, you know, he's, you know, he's just been in the big leagues for about a week, but uh, he can get it up to 97, 98, and a real hard slider. Number one prospect, and he gets a hard ground ball back to the mound. He'll run it all the way over and make the easy flip, and the first out of the inning is Cabrera. For every Orioles walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 for the March of Dimes, 56 walks, $2,800. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. One away here in the bottom half of the eighth inning, Caleb Joseph coming up, two singles, two RBIs, and he has flied out. 22 year old, right hander, or left hander on the mound, rather, with Pretty good size, 6'3", listed at 235 for this young lefty out of uh, North Carolina. And a swing and a foul ball off speed pitch. Yeah, a little slider. And he eventually, and, and talking to Don Cooper, the pitch he got a long time, pitch coach with the White Sox, he, he, he'll get an opportunity to start. Rodon with the 0 2 delivery. Joseph on a cut on a pitch down and into him, and he's gone in a hurry. Two down. Orioles now have struck out to seven times. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Orioles have their closer, Zach Britton, needing work. Obviously, not a save situation in an 8 2 ball game. Navarro goes after the first pitch center field Eaton is there. And he's got it. One two three inning. Rondon gets it done in a hurry. The Orioles are three outs away from evening their mark at 10 10 on the year. They lead it 8 2. Book your low fare now at southwest.com and by PNC for the Achiever in you. Camden Yards is the site, the historic day, first game ever in the history of Major League Baseball to be played with no crowd as only those working the game and here at the ballpark are in, and one who's in and working is Zach Britton. Yeah, came in on Saturday night to, to try to get his fifth save, and as it turned out, walked the first batter and then. Some bad luck, rainy night. Uh, the Red Sox uh, would score the tying run, and then David Lowe would hit the walk-off home run. So you're right. This is about getting your work off day tomorrow for the Orioles before they go down to Tampa. So Britton trying to wrap it up here, and his first pitch will be taken up high. Gets the top of the order. Emilio Bonifacio 
as the pinch hitter for Eaton. A switch hitter utility guy with great speed hitting from the right side. But Afasio down the line as a coming over will not have a play on that one. Veteran Bonifacio getting the lefty righty match up here. And a one ball one strike count. So Kevin Gosman worked an inning and he had two strikeouts. Nivaldo Jimenez seven innings two runs none earned four hits a walk and six strikeouts. And the count goes to two and one. So the Orioles. Chance to continue their streak against the White Sox, not having lost in the last six. That'll be a base hit. Deaza will come over to get it and will backhand it and hold him to a single. Bonifacio on with a pinch hit single here to lead off the ninth inning. Follow the Orioles all season with MLB.com at bat, number one app for live baseball. At bat up to the moment, any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Runner on, nobody out. And here is Melky Cabrera. Switch hitter will take it inside. Yeah, Zach Britton uh, on Saturday night took him a while to get his uh, rhythm. And, uh, you know, he pitched not only did, well, he walked the leadoff batter, but eventually, I mean, all the hits were in the the infield kind of bad luck but has to get back to doing what he's doing best that one he let go Navarro's got to go to first and gets it there in time to record the out yeah you got to like the way that Melky Cabrera ran that ball out pretty routine off the bat but again it could have been an infield hit and Orioles are looking for outs they're looking for base runners I mean hustle down Jim you talk about learning the last ground ball that came back to the mound when Britain was on he tried to play. Yep, yep. Went off his glove, glove and he didn't get any yeah, outs. You could take his hand right out of there. And that was, you know, it was one of those balls that hit the top of his yeah. glove. He was trying to get it right there. He took the hand out. He figured your second baseman would make the play, and uh, Navarro came in and did that. So now a runner on at second base with one down. Here's Abreu. Two strikeouts, and he's hit into a double play. And a chopper. This will be played at first. Cabrera on the scoop. Running throw off the bag. Nice play by Davis, who gets the tag on. And there are two away. Yeah, and then uh, Zach gets back to doing what he does best, which is throwing ground balls. And once again, one of those really slow rollers. He's yeah. I'm not, not anything to do with that. I'm gonna let my middle infielders take care of it. <laughs> Less and we, we kind of joke about that because one of the things, I mean, he's I saw him in the interleague play in a home run, beating it off of uh, Brandon Beachy. He, same game down in Atlanta, uh, infield hit so he can run. One thing he didn't do well is field, and they really worked on it. Much better field. We've seen him already this year make plays that he would have made in other years. LaRoche for two and a walk and a run scored in the ball game. Fans with a let's go O's chant outside the gates here as they have been throughout the ball game. Well, they can't get in. They were still loyal and true. Amazing. Got to love that. Well, you love the fans. I mean, it's. That's why you can never play in an empty house no. as a matter of course. Well, I, I remember uh, when I was 18 years old, it's about 39 degrees, and it's opening day in Aberdeen, uh, South Dakota. I'm playing for Cal Ripken Sr., and he tells us about the Oriole way, work ethic, uh, passion, have fun. And he said the only reason we're here is because of those people out there chanting. Exactly. Yep. And uh, it is. I mean, you know, obviously, you're supporting your family. Everybody has jobs. You as we said today, you play the game, maybe you distract from all the things that are going on. But at the end of the day, fans, they, they make it happen. One ball, two strike count. Britain's delivery to him, swung on and missed, and the ball game is over. So Zach Britton here in the ninth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors. The base runner left on. The Orioles get it done early as it came to be and come away with an 8-2 win on this historic day. 8, 11, and 1 for the Orioles, 2, 4, and 1 for the White Sox.